You have come into the world at a most significant time. We are entering the final stages of a great war. This war commenced before the foundations of the world and has been pursued with awful consequence throughout the world's history. I speak of the war between the followers of Christ and all those who deny him as their God. John the Revelator wrote concerning this war, and there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels and prevailed not, neither was their fa place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. John the Revelator described a great war in heaven. The issue was moral agency, as it is today. All who have ever lived on this earth were among those who fought against Satan and stood with the Son and the Father. Unfortunately, Satan's war did not end with his expulsion from heaven. As John observed, Satan and his followers were cast out into the earth and have come here with great wrath. The evidence of their wrath can be seen in the blood and horror that has afflicted man from the beginning of time. The war that began in heaven over this issue is not yet over. The conflict continues on the battlefield of mortality. And one of Lucifer's primary strategies has been to restrict our agency through the power of earthly governments. Man is in this earth to be tested. The issue as to whether he succeeds or fails will be determined by how he uses his agency. His whole future through all eternity is at stake. A bridge man's agency and the whole purpose of his mortality is thwarted. Without it, the Lord says, there is no existence. He, that is the Lord, so valued man's agency that he himself designed and dictated the laws and constitution required to guarantee it. We need to remember Edwin Burke's statement the only thing necessary for the triumph of evil is for good men to do nothing. We need to raise our voices with other concerned citizens throughout the world in opposition to the current trends. You will need bravery and you will need boldness because you are enlisted in the Lord's army in the last dispensation. This is not a time of peace. That has not been so since Satan arrayed his forces against our Heavenly Father's plan in the pre-existence. We don't know the details of the combat then, but we know one result. Satan and his followers were cast down into the earth. And since the creation of Adam and Eve, the conflict has continued. We have seen it intensify. And the scriptures suggest that the war will become more violent and the spiritual casualties on the Lord's side will mount. There are some who would have us believe that the final test of the rightness of a course is whether everyone is united on it. But the church does not seek unity simply for unity's sake. The unity for which the Lord prayed is the only unity which God honors. That is unity in righteousness, unity in principle. We cannot compromise good and evil in an attempt to have peace and unity in the church, any more than the Lord could have compromised with Satan in order to avoid the war in heaven. How would you have reacted if during the war in heaven someone had said to you, look, just do what's right. There's no need to get involved in the fight for free agency. Now it is obvious what the devil is trying to do, but it is sad to see many of us fall for his destructive line. 
The cause of freedom is the most basic part of our religion. Our position on freedom helped get us to this earth, and it can make the difference as to whether we get back home or not. So, the great test of life is to see whether we will hearken to and obey God's commands in the midst of the storms of life. It is not to endure storms, but to choose the right while they rage. And the tragedy of life is to fail in that test and so fail to qualify its return in glory to our heavenly home. It will take unshakable faith in the Lord Jesus Christ to choose the way to eternal life. It is by using that faith we can know the will of God. It is by acting on that faith we build the strength to do the will of God. And it is by exercising that faith in Jesus Christ that we can resist temptation and gain forgiveness through the atonement. We will need to have developed and nurtured faith in Jesus Christ long before Satan hits us, as he will, with doubts and appeals to our carnal desires and with lying voices saying that good is bad and that there is no sin. Those spiritual storms are already raging. We can expect that they will worsen until the Savior returns. In this mighty struggle, each of you has a part. Every person on the earth today chose the right side during the war in heaven. Be on the right side now. Stand up and be counted. If you get discouraged, remember the words of Edward Everett Hale when he said, I am only one, but I am one. I can't do everything, but I can do something. What I can do, that I ought to do. And what I ought to do, by the grace of God, I shall do. And this is my prayer for you this day. May God bless all of you, each and every one.